everybody. Welcome to a first in a series of what I'm going to be calling search bait episodes of you first, where we're going to take something that isn't necessarily very good and we're going to go ahead and do it. One of the things that um, is really hard to find right now in terms of affinity photo is creating a bottle mock-up. So essentially what we mean by a bottle mock-up is we're going to take a label concept that we have and we're going to apply it to a bottle design. We're going to do something really simple because this is going to introduce you to the tools you probably don't know in Affinity Photo, and that is the warp tool. And we're not going to just cover the warp tool because there are plenty of videos about the warp tool. The Where the videos are kind of lacking is in terms of how to apply it for a bottle or can mock-up. And so I'm going to provide some tips that will be applicable to any application that has a warp tool for this kind of thing, uh, Photoshop included, although there are other tools for Photoshop that make it a little bit more repeatable. Um, we could talk about that at some other time. If you're wondering what I mean by repeatable, go ahead and comment and I'll tell you what I mean, but it largely has to do with nested files. Uh, you can do nested files in Affinity Photo, but they don't work the same way. They don't have the same latitude that you have in Photoshop. Photoshop, you can actually use a warp tool on an embedded document. Can't necessarily do that with this. You can use the perspective tool in an embedded document, but you can't use the warp tool. So unfortunately, what we're going to do today is kind of a one-off situation. You get, it, you get to apply it once and and then you're done. So you want to try to do it right the first time, which is the extra stuff that I'm going to show you. As you can see by this bottle here, it's a 3D rendering that I got from Envato Elements. I'll be talking about Envato Elements on future videos, but the point of this is that it's a nice, simple, clean bottle. We could go ahead and move this to a photograph that we stage appropriately for this position of the bottle that we could put on a bar, for example. Um, or a table, counter, what have you, flat surface, right? So, uh, but for now, we're just going to focus on the bottle, and we're not going to focus on any of the other terms uh, like shading and things like that, because a lot of those kinds of tutorials are very good uh, for Affinity Photo. But unfortunately, um, doing a bottle mock-up is pretty limited. So we're going to do that. And um, basically, we're going to take this uh, little label that I created offline, and we're going to, let me turn off my phone noises. So uh, we're going to take this image, which is essentially a background transparent label that we created. I made it appropriate for this particular bottle, and we're going to go ahead and paste that. So I copied it from the previous document. Um, and now we're going to, uh, and then I pasted it into here. And so we're going to generally place this where we think it makes some sense, right? Now, um, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of generally put this where I think it belongs. And then I'm going to actually literally turn it off for a period of time. And the reason for that is because one of the main things that's wrong with the tutorials on how to do this is they show you how to use the tool. Plenty of, plenty of advice out there on how to use the tool within Affinity Photo, but um, not enough on how to make it look right. And so this is what I'm going to show you here is a technique you could use within Photoshop or even GIMP potentially. I'm not a huge GIMP user, but that's a, a free Linux alternative to either of these programs. And what I'm going to do is um, kind of stage this a little bit and give ourselves something to uh, work with. And so what I want to start with is with the move tool selected, I'm going to reach out to our ruler to start grabbing some guides and I want to kind of set a middle guide here which looks like it sits right about the apex it looks like um, our guides are uh, turned off so we'll turn those on there okay so this is about dead center close enough it looks like it might be able to come over just a touch more uh, you want it to kind of match the apex of the curve here and the apex of the curve here it's kind of a downward curve so I don't know if you call that an apex Somebody um, can probably uh, tell me what to do there. Okay, so um, from there, we're going to uh, put in some additional guides. 
right? First, uh, we'll, let's actually turn this label back on for a second. We're going to set a guide to the top of that label, and we're going to set a guide to the bottom of that label, because that's going to be important for us down the road. We're going to set a couple more guides in a moment, um, but for now, let's turn the label back off, and we're going to do something that very rarely does anyone talk about. You very often when you're doing design work you actually need to create things to kind of help guide you and the guides are great for straight things but when it comes to curved things you don't really have curved guides to work with in photo editing applications at large and unless you get plugins that give it to you and what what have you but um, but what you can do is just create curved layers and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come over here and I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and I'm going to just create an ellipse somewhere around the edge here and I'm just going to draw it across the bottle and um, I'm going to move it to where I think now, granted, this ellipse is a little big for this area, but we essentially want to have an ellipse that will tie in with our center line for these horizontal lines. And we'll do another one. Okay, I'm going to duplicate that. Uh, my little mouse helper here has a tendency to do some things. The key commands for my mouse helper are very similar to... Uh, well, they match um, to some of the chord commands that I need uh, for. So what I just did there was option drag, um, and that gives me a it duplicates what I just created. And you'll see why I'm making these in just a second. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to create ellipses that look as if the bottom curve correlates with the front of the bottle and the back curve correlates with the back of the bottle that we don't see because this is an opaque bottle design. This ellipse here looks pretty good because it correlates with the fact that up here, you know, in terms of perspective, uh, there are way better uh, conversations and tutorials and so forth about perspective. Um, but an ellipse is essentially what a circle looks like when tilted or turned in perspective and so but different ellipses uh, of different sizes kind of indicate different tilt right of of your subject and so we're gonna use this one here to kind of give us a guideline for the top of the label and then we're gonna use the bottom one here as a guideline for the bottom of the label now I want to use this horizontal line because I want to pull down the middle of the label to kind of sit right around here. So I'm using the center, uh, I'm using this guideline to represent the center of this ellipse. And actually this one, I want to kind of represent the bottom of the label. And therefore I'm gonna use the, um, the horizontal line to touch the bottom of this ellipse, okay? So what, what we're trying to do is create um, ellipses that represent the perspective before we start actually using the warp tool because I don't just want to show you how to use the tool I want you to sh I want to show you how to use it in a convincing way and so you can tell here if we um, zoom out actually this um, and we click off of the ellipse um, we'll notice that that line doesn't this this line here almost looks like water or a liquid inside of a semi-transparent bottle so this one looks pretty good right so you have a convex curve here at the top the the ellipses flatten out here to about like looking straight at it as a two-dimensional line almost and then you can kind of imagine them getting bigger and bigger and bigger the ellipse is getting taller and taller and taller towards circular as we get towards the bottom of the bottle right and so this here is not big enough right so if we do something like this that still looks a little shallow right because see how these edges here kind of converge down here or I can even zoom it right here see how this line here and this line here 
converge towards something a little tight, they should look parallel, not like they're gonna converge on each other, right? So what we'll do is stretch this out a little bit further, maybe something like that, right? And um, I like to click out and kind of blur my eyes a little bit, right? One thing that'll actually help is uh, I'll zoom in, oops, I'll zoom in a little bit, and I'm gonna select it again. I'm gonna actually bring this in a little bit. Um, oops, wrong modifier. Man, just at the edge of the bottle, right? And so we hold down Command as we drag, and we can see that working there. Uh, unfortunately, command is also my little draw tool here, so you just have to bear with me. That goes away after about three seconds. Okay, so this looks like there's a little bit of converging going on, but as you, you probably heard the term converging lines in terms of perspective, so you want a little bit of convergence. You just don't want so much convergence that it looks like it's the wrong angle. Now, granted, this if you could get this same bottle output in both wireframes and as a 3D rendered bottle with the appropriate surfaces and so forth, uh, that would be great because then you could apply one on top of the other and you wouldn't need to create these eyeball um, ellipses to kind of estimate what that looks like, right? So we're actually going to go ahead and take this here and we're going to bring this in a little bit as well. And, um, and that should pretty much do it. Uh, I think because we kept that ellipse at just about the same space, um, it should still look appropriate. So I'm going to zoom out again. I'm going to click off, zoom out again. And this really kind of looks like we're almost, it went from looking like liquid at the top. Maybe it looks like two layers of liquid. You've got like one uh, more buoyant liquid sitting at the top or less dense liquid. And then at the bottom, you've got this uh, thicker, heavier, white liquid at the bottom um, that kind of, helps you see whether that looks accurate or not. It almost looks like there's a can sitting in the middle. And that's kind of what we want to do, right? So these are going to be our guides just as much as these lines are, right? So let's do a couple more guides, right? Let's first turn back on our, our label. Let's put the label up to the top above these other guides and and think through that. Does that look, maybe we'll go ahead and um, kind of uh, imagine that, right? We can imagine it um, on the, on this side. Does that look pretty good, right? We're talking about this far edge here, right? This, this edge here, we want to kind of look at that and make sure that that is, um, kind of that the placement makes sense. Now granted this curve, this straight line here is going to match this curve of the bottom edge of that ellipse when we're done. And we're going to, even though you can't really see much, there's not much to anchor to because this is a transparent label, we're going to do the same up here at the top with this top line surrounding this box. Okay, and we're going to do this, we're going to do the same over here. Uh, excuse all my little mouse tools, I'm getting used to using them. Um, and we've got uh, this, yeah, we're going to probably come in a little bit further here, right? And so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and drag another, oops, I didn't mean to, I want to drag, ooh, man, I want this kind of curvature a little bit, right? Um, where, where it doesn't go, I don't want it to go just to the edge of the bottle, I want to come in just a little bit, right? And since the bottle is is kind of um, distorted this way by the lens, virtual lens in this case, since it's a 3D model, um, we're going to want to kind of come in. So we're going to want a point up here, and then we're going to want a point down here that's a little further in from that one. But let's first just go ahead and take care of the, the first set of lines, right? So now you'll notice that because I have this, like, uh, <laughs> distillery signature here it kind of sticks outside of the bottle so we're going to go ahead and use that as the bleeding edge there and then we're going to take the we're going to take this and just come in we're going to eyeball it um, and I think just about there looks pretty good actually before I drop it see what I mean I'm looking over here at this side and I want to kind of match the distance in from the left as we are on the right on the other side. Okay. 
All right, and so now we're just going to go ahead and take this label and recenter it. Okay. Now, um, we're going to want to come in a little bit at the bottom from those lines, but I think we're going to do better just by eyeballing it. I don't want this video to take forever. The main thing that I want to add to this is two two things I want to make sure that you grab from this. One, we're doing this in Affinity Photo. It's a much cheaper application than Photoshop um, by a bunch of standards, um, but it's excellent for the price. Two, we're going. I wanted to make sure that I introduced the perspective component of how to do this with ellipses um, within uh, a mesh warp job, right? We're doing a very simple mesh warp here, but we want to make sure that it looks good and that it looks like it really wraps around the bottle rather than wrapping around the bottle with a bit of uh, with with distortion which is what you'll see on many of these videos especially for affinity photo so um, let's let's go ahead and actually we're gonna by holding down option when we drag it will kind of shrink this a little bit right and now it looks a little bit um, tight <laughs> obviously um, but that's what we want to do right we're gonna do the same here get this to the bottom of that ellipse and and now we have what I think is pretty good to work with right so I'm gonna zoom in a lot here so that we can essentially devote the majority of the visible space on the screen towards um, eyeballing this because we're really going to need to eyeball it now you got to keep in mind that when I turn on this mesh tool it is destructive okay so when we're done I mean not as destructive that not so destructive that you can't solve it with undo but once you're done it's locked and you can't go back to your settings but you can turn off the handlebars and stuff that you'll see in a second uh, temporarily so you can eyeball it and see how things look okay well I'm back uh, I'm back when I never told you I was gonna leave turns out I had some major issues what I was just telling you about how you have to be careful about the warp tool you have to be really careful about the warp tool so careful in fact that you need to put your guidelines down first okay you need to put all your guidelines down first because you have to switch tools to grab a guideline from the ruler you need to make sure you have them in place because switching tools locks your decisions for the warp tool so I was in the middle of a warp it was looking really really good and I screwed it up so why am I looking at the label again well because I need to make those guides first and what we need to do is try to set up guides for this center area we want the center area to be as undistorted as possible because that's right at the front of the bottle so we're gonna go ahead and copy all of this we're gonna go back to the bottle and we're gonna paste it and we can use the move tool now we can use it as much as we want now this is pretty much let's see now we had this down to the bottom of that there we go so here is the here's where it's lining up um, in fact since we don't have the warp tool engaged yet let's do some other things to make this a little easier to see we're gonna set this to 50 percent for now um, maybe actually set it down to 20 percent so that we can barely see our partially warped project here below and we're gonna go ahead and um, leave this unchanged this this particular layer here right and then we're gonna drag in some guides so that we can say the boat should end here at the front bow thingy I don't know what that is I wish I were a sailor but I'm not um, a huge fan of Yacht Rock though um, so we're gonna use those guides and um, let's think of any other guides we might want while we have the chance um, let's actually turn this off for a second and one of the other things that I remember we needed was 
um, we need so just like we have this guide here we want to have let's let's actually bring a guide down here where uh, the label outline should intersect with the ellipse um, let's do the same down at the bottom right so we want the ellipse to intersect with our label right around here right that's right here and right here okay and then um, we want to that that's probably plenty um, if we need more we're essentially screwed <laughs> because we're gonna go ahead and start warping this and uh, we have to just go for it anything else we want to help us do this we're SOL. We can't do anything else. Once we start on this warp tool, we have to finish on this warp tool. We can turn the guides on and off, or we can turn the nodes on and off, which you'll see. So we'll go ahead and turn this on. See these here? These are called nodes. So a node is like an endpoint on a path. And so there's one path right now that goes around the outside, around the outside around the outside and then here when you click them you not only have the node but you also have handlebars and these handlebars are what does the distorting as you can see now unfortunately if we start distorting like right now this whole section is affected you can see distortions just from this one handlebar all the way down here so to kind of constrain some of that we want to just put the handlebars we want to kind of create at least two sections here right the rest of it we kind of do want a global we, we kind of want total control over one side and total control over the other side but we want to lock down the point here and the point here okay because this is what we spent all that time with those ellipses doing right so now let's get started we're going to go ahead and take these two. You can select multiple nodes at a time by holding down shift in between each click. Um, and then you can go ahead and move these together at the same time. Now, this top one goes where we want it. But you'll notice because there's such a difference in the shape of these ellipses that this one only came up part way. But that's fine. We'll finish it later. Now, without holding down shift, we're going to click the next one. But now holding down shift, we're going to click that one. We're going to go ahead and bring this up to that intersection. Okay. And now that these two are down a little bit, we're going to take this one. Now we hold down shift. I didn't hold sh down shift when I selected that first one. And now we're going to move these up at the same time and get them up around here. Okay. And that's pretty good. Now notice that we've got, it's wider up here than it is down here. Okay, so we're not foreshortening the shape of the bottle enough with the label. So let's eyeball it in a little bit. I'm going to leave this one here. Because of the signature, there's a little bit of bleed on this side. So I'm going to let this one kind of... In fact, I'm going to let it sit here on this corner, but I'm going to cheat that side up here and bring this one out just a touch to kind of get this gap here to foreshorten at the same rate as the bottle foreshortens. But on this side, I'm going to bring this one in a little bit. Now granted, this is not mathematically perfect, okay? And I'll bring this one out a little bit too, since we're only dealing, we're only compensating for a tiny little bit of that signature over there. So, um, this is an eyeball job. The ellipses are just to help you get it closer to a perfect job. You can get really close, and some people are going to get at it better than me. A lot of concept illustrators are amazing at eyeballing uh, their perspective. I am not a genius in here, but I, I'm pretty good at eyeballing. So now we're going to grab, since we already have this one selected, let's go ahead and grab this handlebar and bring it down. Okay, we'll go over to this handlebar. And bring it down. Now I'm not stretching this, right? I'm I'm just trying to stick within the same arc 
that it would be as best as I can, because I don't want to invoke more distortion than we need, right? And so I'm doing that down here. I'm going to do that down here. Okay, so this obviously needs to come down a little bit more because there's a big gap down here, right? If I look down here, see that gap? That gap, I need to come down here with that node in order to close that gap. So I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to just take it maybe right around there and then bring this back up a little bit. All right, and then this one, because these guides aren't necessarily perfect, they're just here to help. So we can, they're just like the law, right? You don't, you don't actually have to obey the law. The, the law is there for you to help you <laughs> serve as guidelines. I'm just joking, by the way. That's don't tell your parents. All right, so this one, um, I'm actually going to bring this up a little bit and down a little bit further. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Oops, I gotta click this first and then zoom and then bring that out a little bit. Okay, now um, this is looking pretty good. Okay, um, we have to hide the mesh there. Let's just be careful, right? I don't want to start this all over again, but keep in mind that's how sensitive this tool is. Don't let this selection go away. This here needs to stay selected while you're working on it even if you don't see the handlebars at the moment because we're hiding the mesh because it will make you very angry when you have to start over don't don't screw up um, if you know how to avoid it so there's a couple problems I'm noticing here at a distance if we if we go ahead and we select all of these outside nodes holding down shift as we select each one You'll notice that right around here, see how it kind of diverges from the center? This goes a little to the outside of the line. This goes a little to the inside of the line. This outside, this inside, right? So it's not straight. It's kind of shaped hourglassy a little bit. So let's go in, and we're going to zoom back in over here. And we're going to just, I'll zoom in, I'll click, zoom in, and drag. You don't want to get it perfect on the top because when we get this one perfect, oops, click, and then that looks pretty good. See how they're both kind of aiming at each other? That's good. So over here, we kind of want to cut the distance in half. So click, and then cut the distance in half. And then, and then here, we're going to cut the distance in half, and then it should be straight, and it looks pretty good. Okay, and so that's going to get those lines to kind of match the outside edge of the bottle. Okay, next, this is where we needed these guides for, right? Because now I can't re invoke, I, I want to go over here and show the other label again. But if I do, we run the risk of losing all of this curvature work that we've done. So let's not do that. So let's go ahead and take this and trying to, there is no constraint. Like I can't constrain this to be straight. I try and it, there is no constraint, right? So we can't. So you have to eyeball it. There's a lot of eyeballing, okay? So I'm gonna come over here and bring this out over to that guideline. I can't constrain it to perfectly parallel. But one thing you can do is actually see how these lines look relatively smooth and parallel without any like ragged lines or getting too blurry. That's that's a good indicator that it's pretty square along the pixels, right? And so we're going to do the same with these here. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this over. Um, we actually don't need to come over as far at the bottom because, as remember, the bottle is kind of shaped like this, right? So we're going to do that. We're going to kind of come over the same distance down here. I'll zoom in when we do it. That's probably about there. Now we can come in a little bit further. 
That looks good. Now, it's notice it's kind of squaring off here, right? Now, the reason why it's squaring off is because these edges are more uh, abrupt than they needed to be. Because now that we've kind of stretched out the middle a little bit, now the work that we did earlier is a little off. So we're going to go ahead and bring these back a little bit and then up. So this is the first time we're intentionally changing the length of this. And that is because that'll help us align with this curve. So we just want to align with that curve a little bit better. And so now that we've got these stretched out to where we want them, these side ones, we can pretty much anything we do with these corner handlebars is going to help make it more accurate. So if we shrink it in a little bit and then up, or just up, maybe out and up, I think it needs to go in and up. So maybe if we go in and up over here, it's going to feel better, right? Let's, uh, that looks pretty good. Okay. So we're going to do the same down here. This is a more um, aggressive angle down here. This line actually doesn't look too bad, right? But we do want to come up and in a little bit. So we're going to click. I'll zoom in while we do it. We're coming in and up a little bit. Okay. And then this one here, we're going to come in and up a little bit okay and that curve looks pretty good this curve looks pretty good right and so from what I can tell that's it I don't see any weird distortions around this curve I don't see any weird distortions around this curve and we're pretty much done. I feel like this is a properly ramped off to the side sort of thing. This line looks a little off, but it should be a little, but it might be a little too much. But mathematically, I think we're good, so I'm not going to complain. Okay, so now we are done. We just, when we're done, we just say, apply or click anything else in the application uh, apparently I think they need to work on that you should be allowed to make mistakes that aren't catastrophic um, in fact I don't think they should be considered mistakes please do something about the guides I should be able to add a guide no matter what I'm doing it shouldn't create a catastrophic failure that is for you Sarah do something about it please um, I don't want to teach people how to use software that they hate. So um, now let's go ahead and turn off these ellipses and let's go ahead and hide our guides um, and zoom out. And I think that looks pretty good, honestly. So because it was a transparent background label, I think this looks pretty accurate given the lighting scenario that we're dealing with, but there may be some other stuff that you want to do here. Um, so for example, we could enhance this just a touch, um, by adding a bit of a highlight over here and, and see this, this pair, part here, there's a couple things we could do, right? For one, we could go in here and set this to multiply and see what that does. Now multiply certainly helps this side, right? And, um, because what we're doing is we're taking the colors of the top layer and multiplying it by the colors in the bottom layer, something like that. Um, mathematicians, you can correct me if you'd like. So on this side though, we haven't done anything about this highlight, right? So the multiply solves the side on the right, um, but the side on the left is still a little, um, might look a little fake to some people. But what I'm gonna do to kind of give a little glint right around here, like there's just a little bit of highlight that feels like it needs to bleed down just softly from about here to here. It wouldn't hurt if it came like almost like an arch curve here. That'd be a little too much maybe, but um, what we'll do is take this layer, let's rename it and just call it label. Probably should have done that a long time ago. And um, what, what's this layer? I think this is useless. Let's get rid of that. 
I don't know where that came from. And we'll go ahead and add an effects layer to it. And we're going to go ahead and build a gradient. Now, some of these tools here are way better than Photoshop. I'm often disappointed with Photoshop that it's been around forever, yet as screens get more and more high resolution, the tools stay the same freaking size, so they're harder to use. But they do a nice job of expanding the capabilities contextually in this application. So while it's lacking some things that to me are fundamental and necessary, it is, uh, it is still pretty damn good. So what we're going to do is we're going to just drop a glint in here with the gradient tool. And we're going to do that by setting both endpoints of this gradient to white. Okay, so we're selecting the black one right now. We're going to set it to white. Okay, and we're going to set this one. We're going to add one in here. This, we're going to add three of them right around here. These, we're all going to set to zero opacity because we just want this one here that's a little off center to represent the glint, right? And so we're going to set this to zero opacity, this to zero opacity, this one to zero opacity, and this one to zero opacity. Okay, now that's a little harsh of a glint, so we're going to expose this a little bit. All right? See how that kind of gives the, it almost looks real right <laughs> this is a glint we didn't know this is from a light source we didn't know we even had right because the bottle is such a muted surface and textured surface but the label is this shiny almost metallic material so this this actually could work um, but we don't really want it to work like that um, so we're going to move these over a little bit um, uh, we might leave this spread out a little bit. I think we can actually remove this node, okay? Because we're moving further over than I expected, right? And then we'll take this opacity down and um, see where we like it. Right about there, okay? And um, eh, maybe a little bit further. Subtle is good. I like that. Okay. And there you go. That is our bottle. I'm going to click off of this layer so that we don't see the outline. But there we go. There it is. We took it a little further than I expected. I just wanted to show you the warp tool and the way to kind of guide your warping a little bit using ellipses. But for the most part, um, that would have been good enough. But after looking at it, I thought, eh, can we kick it up a notch? And sure enough, I think we did. So um, thanks for sticking around and learning with me. This has been the first of what I'm going to be calling Search Bait. Uh, so this is, I guess, Search Bait episode one. And the idea is I'm looking for things that can be done that, you know, uh, aren't covered very well in the YouTube world. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I'll see you next time.